Hi, I'm Dr. Jan Jaffer, and this is Got Teeth, a patient-centric monthly podcast featuring local health experts. So today I'm here with Arlene, who's been part of this Marlboro Choo Choo Pediatric Dental Clinic for over 30 years. I mean, that's an amazing feat that you've been part of this organization for 30 years and this clinic here in uh, in Calgary for over 30 years. So congratulations Thank us you. on that. Thank you. Um, today we're going to focus on, you know, talking about nutrition and talking about taking care of teeth. And I know that you do a lot of information and a lot of consults with patients to make sure that they are doing well with what they're putting into their body and what that is making sure that their teeth are staying healthy while they're eating because we know that it affects obviously our entire system but a lot of what we eat really does affect our teeth and then we want to make sure that kids and adults have you know good nutrition in their diet but stuff that's also not going to affect their teeth so when you're talking to people and when we're having these conversations what are you telling people that they can or can't eat that would be important for people to know? For sure, Jen. I like to break down what's important for snacks. For children, they typically eat several times a day. Absolutely. So the concern is what they're consuming at that snack time because we know that the mouth does not clean itself very well during that period. So we wouldn't recommend a lot of high sugary foods, potentially those that are sticky like candy, um, dry cereal, dry crackers cookies, that type of scenario, I would recommend that more at snack, or probably dessert time, that they have it at the end of the meal, okay? okay. Um, lots of water we recommend, juices can be a problem as well because the sugar content in them, and because they're liquid, they're flowable, so they go between the teeth. So ideally, I would talk about the snacks, and then telling parents that, that it's acceptable to have some sweets or treats at the meals, but managed. Okay. So when we're talking about snacks, because this is important, I mean, you obviously you're sending kids to school and you need to give them enough food to eat in a day. Um, what are some good healthy snacks that we could incorporate? Because I know it's a challenge for parents all the time is trying to figure out what to give you know, their kids so that they have nutrition, but it also, you know. Absolutely. Um, cheese strings are very good. High fat foods are very acceptable because they will provide that extra protection for the tooth. So it could be a yogurt or a yogurt tube. It could be fruit or vegetables. Um, they can also send something that's high fat natured, maybe some sandwich meat or pepperoni, beef jerky, that type of scenario as well. Um, there are the peanut free varieties that can be offered in terms of the butters that can go as well. I know snacking is very difficult. We do recommend water bottles for kids so that they're, if they're having juice, they're having that more at meal time with their lunch versus in between. Yeah, and that's a good point. I think that, you know, when we talk about what people are drinking, if you're taking a sip of something over a period of time, I mean, really the only acceptable thing is water. Right. Popcorn is another acceptable snack too, and some of the schools won't allow that in because they're considering that a junk food option, like a potato chip. So it's, it is challenging for families. I do understand that because you want variety in their diet mm -hmm. and children do not want the same thing every day. Um, I also counsel some parents that if they wanted to pick a particular day of the week and that was their fun food day, then they could discuss as a family what that snack might be and then it's limited. So they're not restricted in terms of what they might be able to have, it's when they're having it. So that's actually interesting. So you want to actually plan something like a fun snack into the week or on a day of the week so that you know people know what's happening and you can, you can do some of that fun stuff. But on a regular day, and unfortunately, the, you know, some of the boring, boring vegetables and right. the rest of that still needs to be a big part of what they're eating. Um, I think one of the things that, that I learned recently that I didn't know that much about was actually the, some of the concerns with just crackers um, and understanding how some of these dry cereals or crackers, you know, what happens with those? And, and can you tell us a little bit about why maybe that's a bad idea? Crackers um, are carbohydrate and they come from grain. Grain is a big staple in our diet because it is in many of the foods that we eat. But when that gets mixed with our saliva, it turns to sugar. And so when you're eating a cracker for snack, you'll mix with the saliva and it produces a sugar paste. That will stay on the grooves of the teeth. The saliva may coat that and not allow for that to be removed from the tooth surface. The same thing would be for dry cereal. So if you incorporate fat, it helps to basically make that a safer option, okay? And it can counteract the acid formation that can occur on the tooth. 
So it just creates the fat, the ability for it to slide off of the tooth versus the retention on those two surfaces. So cereal with milk would be an acceptable snack. Cracker with cheese or butter and margarine or peanut butter would also be more acceptable. Interesting. Yeah, so building that in. And, and so then if we're going to give, you know, kids a dessert of some sort or a treat of some sort, are there better treats that we can give them? Um, you know, like, I mean, a gummy bear or ice cream. Is, that, is, there, is there something that's better that we could actually do? Yes, the ice cream is much better because it doesn't have the retention ability. It will melt as opposed to sticking to the tooth. Where a gummy, very sticky, high sugar content, um, that will stay on those teeth. So even as dessert, it's probably not the best option unless you're going to give it at dinner. It's closest to your bedtime brushing. So then I would recommend if a parent is going to give something of that nature, that they are helping with that brushing at that night time. It would be the shortest period of time that's on the tooth. Okay, perfect. So let's take it one step further and talk about just taking care of the teeth. So, you know, I, I, I know we talked to Dr. Oris in one of our podcasts recently about some of this, but give me your take. I mean, how can we, with snacks, you've got some great ideas. We're gonna actually include some information into this presentation about some healthy snacks so people have this written down so they can see that. Uh, but taking care of kids' teeth, what's what, what do we need to do? Well, I think parents need to be interactive with their children. They need to be part of that routine. So often we get busy with our daily lives and the parents may feel that they don't have the time to get in. For a lot of families, the children may not want their parents in either. And so it becomes a bit of a struggle at home in terms of what can be done and when it can be done. We recommend children have brushing twice a day. Um, we are okay with children doing it potentially by themselves in the morning. And I would recommend after breakfast so that that food is removed from for the day. Bedtime brushing, absolutely by parents, okay? And I believe in teamwork. So you can have the child do it first, parent come in and finish that off with the flossing. For kids over six, um, they may just need parental supervision, and that would mean hands-on with the parents watching and then doing that flossing. Okay. No, that's great. That's a lot of good information. And, and I think that, you know, one of the other things that Oris brought up is that um, fluoridated toothpaste actually in kids is, is actually a good thing, even from right at the beginning. So we don't want to avoid that because sometimes we're told, hey, you know, we don't want them swallowing it and we don't right. want kids swallowing the toothpaste. But even from a very young age, a little bit of fluoridated toothpaste, just a right size amount, is still actually really important for the teeth. Yes, correct, Jen. And you can even go with a smear. Yeah. Okay, what we're finding is that we're seeing a lot of children at the age of 12 months or even younger that are coming in with early childhood caries. And that's from extended use of milk at bedtime, whether it's via breast or it's in a bottle or perhaps a sippy cup even at age five. Um, if you're getting that toothpaste in, that can help to remineralize some of those areas and strengthen that. Okay. And even if a child did small, a small or swallow a small portion, um, it wouldn't be doing any damage cumulative because there's so, so little in, in that toothpaste. Okay, yeah. so we do recommend kids toothpaste for sure. Yeah, I think you brought up a great point. Sippy cups with milk in them is actually a no-no, right? Or Correct. juice. I mean, we really just don't want them sipping on it over time. A glass of milk, not a problem. For sure. And it's the liquid that is the concern. Okay, so I'm not a proponent for milk at bedtime at all. Mm -hmm. um, regardless of the age, we recommend about 14 months of age that that milk at nighttime stop because teeth are present and parents might not be rushing at that particular time. So if they're getting milk in the day, whether it's via breast or a bottle, that's fine, but we wouldn't want it at night. I would want that feeding done and then a brushing and then water only. So your bottle, your breast, your sippy, it's the vehicle. It's the liquid that becomes an issue. So whether it's juice or milk, or in some cases I've seen soda being given at nighttime, um, that's where we have to really target is what is being given. Perfect. Well, I think that's a lot of great information. I think you've given the audience a lot of stuff that they can use. I think, you know, healthy snacking for kids is important. Healthy snacking for adults is important. I mean, you know, the same things that we're talking about for kids absolutely work in adults. I mean, the whole brushing in the morning and the evening and the fluoridated toothpaste, those are all important across the board. So, you know, thank you for your time. Thank you for your tenure with Choo Choo. I mean, you've been, you've done a great job and you help a lot of people. We really appreciate it. Thanks very much, Jen.